I spent so long taking thumbnails of me holding the ring that I've not really thought about what I'm going to say. Hello, my name's Lois and welcome to today's video where you're going to be joining me on my adventure of reading The Lord of the Rings for the first time. Last year I read part one, The Fellowship of the Ring, and I've recently finished part two, The Two Towers, so this is what I'm going to be talking about today. So first of all, this book took me four months to read, which feels like a long time for a book. I'm curious to know, if you've read this, did it take you a long time to get through Lord of the Rings, or is it just me? The second part of J.R.R. Tolkien's epic adventure, The Lord of the Rings. The company of the ring is sundered. Frodo and Sam continue their journey alone down the river Anduin. Alone, that is, save for a creeping figure that follows wherever they go. Thus continues the classic tale begun in The Fellowship of the Ring, which reaches its awesome climax in The Return of the King. So while The Fellowship of the Ring focused on the forming of the Fellowship and the beginning of their journey together, this second part focuses on the individual journeys that they now have to take. We of course have Frodo and Sam who are continuing their quest to destroy the ring. We have Merry and Pippin who have been kidnapped by orcs. And we have Aragorn, Gimli and Legolas who are trying to rescue Merry and Pippin. So this part of Lord of the Rings is divided into two sections, book three and book four. The first book focuses on Aragorn, Gimli, Legolas, Merry and Pippin. And then the second part is focusing on Frodo and Sam. And book three and book four, the events are happening simultaneously. So in the Fellowship of the Ring, the group seems to be more encountering the elves. Whereas in the Two Towers, men are much more of a focus point. I feel like this takes it from a more fantastical, calm, mystical atmosphere to one that's a lot more tense. The ideas of war and technology and industry are much more prominent. And whilst of course because of their quest there is a lot of journeying and travelling to do, there are also some more battles, fights and action than in the first book, which I think makes it a bit more exciting. I might just go through and mention some of my favourite chapters as well. First of all is Treebeard. So Treebeard is an Ent, so he's a kind of tree creature. And I just found this chapter so magical, so fantastical, so calming. Like, I just felt so much joy reading this chapter. I think my brother told me it sent him to sleep, but maybe that's a good thing. I also quite enjoyed reading some of this aloud, um, especially the Treebeard chapter, because I just find it fun doing like the voices for the different characters. Another chapter I found really interesting is The White Rider. Yeah, so The White Rider, it just really reminded me of a lot of biblical imagery. Firstly, when Gandalf comes back as the White Rider, he reminded me a bit of the Transfiguration. And then it reminded me a lot of the resurrected Jesus appearing to the disciples, but their eyes kind of being covered so that they couldn't recognise him. I felt like that was just such an interesting thing. I've never read anything in a book that has reminded me of, of the resurrected Jesus in that way before. But what I like about Lord of the Rings as well is it doesn't feel like it's just about one character and that there are also kind of biblical imagery with other characters as well. Like Frodo having to go into Mordor, where it seems as though he's almost certainly going to, going to have to die and sacrifice himself to save everybody. And then there's Aragorn who's kind of a... not the kind of king that you would expect at first. And I also just really enjoyed having Gollum in the story as well. I feel like the dialogue between Gollum and Sam was just really fun. I did find some of the descriptions a little bit boring or I just struggled to focus on them and then kept getting distracted. I do find dialogue a lot easier to follow. And when I'm talking about Lord of the Rings, I can't help but giving a shout out to my dear little brothers because they are obsessed with Lord of the Rings and they've been so excited for me to read the books and to watch the movies with them. I can finally understand all the memes that they're talking about. One of my brothers does a great Gollum impression as well. And we all went to a medieval fair together, and that is where I got the ring. Me and my brother both have one. I don't know if the other brother feels left out. Maybe I'll have to get him a ring as well. It's not really the one ring when there's three though, is there? 
So I watched the movie of the two towers with my brothers and of course I have to now compare all the differences, all the similarities, what I thought was good that they changed, what I thought was bad. Overall they get the whole style, costume, settings, everything completely perfect. It is just how you would imagine it in your head from reading the book. We've seen a lot more of the orcs in the two towers and I thought the orcs were just brilliantly done. They were horrible, ugly, scary, everything the orcs are supposed to be. The Ents looked great, which is very important to me because I loved the Ents. Helm's Deep was an amazing battle scene, I really enjoyed it, especially the uh, kamikaze orc. The giant ladders they'd the orcs had built to infiltrate Helm's Deep, it was just a really really great sequence. Sadly, they don't really have the songs in the movies. I get that it wouldn't really fit, but I do enjoy the songs. But there were some things that just were getting me a little bit irritated, and my brothers could see me there getting irritated when I was watching the movie. First of all, it was that the Ents decided not to go to war. And they only decided to go to war after they walked around and seen that the trees were being chopped down. But in the book they know that the trees are being burnt down and cut down and that's one of the reasons why they call their little ent meat. And then they decide to go to war. And I don't know, I just felt disappointed. I'm like, why are they deciding not to go to war? I just felt like the mysteriousness, the age of the ents was kind of maybe underplayed a little bit because the ents are kind of meant to all know what's going on a bit more. But I really enjoyed seeing the Ents destroying Isengard, like, I just loved that in the book, so it was so fun to see. But then, just as I was getting over the fact that the Ents decided not to go to war, Faramir kidnaps Frodo and Sam. I'm like, what is going on? This is not what happens in the book. Faramir's meant to be like, no, it's okay, I don't want the ring, you guys can go, it's fine. He just wants to know what's going on, basically. And in the film, he just feels super similar to Boromir. I just felt that was a key part of the character that they changed. I was like, why are the hobbits in Osgiliath? I thought they'd gone to Gondor somewhere, but they're in Osgiliath. I was like, why are they here? And then all of a sudden there's a, a ring wraith appearing and like right in front of Frodo, and he's holding the ring. And I kept saying to my brothers like, why are these ring wraiths so completely inept? He's right there in front of them with the ring, the thing they're looking for. And they basically just let him go because uh, Faramir fires one arrow at them. And my brothers were arguing in the film's defence that if it was the same way as the book then there wouldn't be enough conflict going on. Maybe that's true but I just didn't like seeing the character change so much. My dog is getting hungry so I have to wrap up quick so I can feed him. I think they managed to set the film out really well. As I said before the book is divided between the first half following part of the fellowship and the last half of the book following Frodo and Sam. And I think maybe that wouldn't have worked so well in the movie. So it was very good what they did between switching through the different perspectives. So I think they did really well and I'm excited to read the third book and watch the third movie as well. It might be a little while before that happens though. So yeah, that was my review of The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien. And basically it was really, really good. And if you haven't read it, I recommend you read it. And yes, I'm excited to see you in the next video. Bye.